Yes, we had a memorial service. Chief was a popular guy here. Remember, people were returning. So people were asking me, when is Chief coming? When is he coming? And it was becoming very difficult for me. I said, I don't know. Where is he? I don't know. When last did you hear of him? Never heard of him. Oh, you must be joking. Other people have visited their people. I said, not us. And I never heard anything about him until 1992, when two young fellows came and said, well, we are from exile, Brother Joe. We've been in MK. I said, oh, show so your back. Oh, glorious, you're wonderful. And uh, where's Timothy? We call him Chief. Where's Chief? And said, no, Brother Joe, he won't be coming back. And in a way, I felt proud. He died in combat, that's wonderful. He gave the supreme sacrifice for us. But what devastated me, they said, no, he didn't die in combat. He was killed. They tortured, maimed him, and just rubbed him off. And I got the story. The bread which we break, is it not the sharing of the body of Christ? He was tortured like I was. And when I got into that cell, I couldn't tell who he was until he spoke. He was tortured and forced to agree that he has sold the movement's guns to the Angolans with me, which thing was not true. I thought what the regime did to me was bad. No, that's nothing compared to what he went through. When the system arrested me and tortured me, when they finished with me, they put me at the doorstep and said, take your rubbish while throw with it. But my movement grabs my younger brothers and sisters, and for whatever reason, they get killed there. They kill them but don't have the decency of coming and say, we're dealt with your rubbish. It's no longer there. It takes me 12 years to know that it's no more. When I'm waiting for him, I write poems. Come back, we are fattening the calf for you. There will be celebration when we come. The guy's long dead. And I rub shoulders with them, comrades who know. And they call me Comrade Joe, but they don't say we killed him.